the diagonal wing can shape as needed depending on the speed. The result? Less fuel, less drag, and higher speeds. This is especially ideal for aircraft flying at speeds of Mach 1.2 to Mach 2, where aerodynamic efficiency is crucial. One of the most attractive features of the diagonal wing is its ability to change shape depending on the flight conditions. At low speeds, such as when taking off or landing, the aircraft needs maximum lift and high stability. In this case, the wing can be horizontal as in a traditional design, providing maximum area for the airflow to pass through and creating strong lift. As the wing approaches cruising altitude and speed, where drag becomes a major factor, gradually tilts to transition into an aerodynamically optimized mode. This transition can be controlled automatically or via an onboard computer, depending on the design. You might think that designing a swept wing would be much more complicated, and it does require sophisticated technology to control it. But oblique wing aircraft are mechanically simpler than traditional variable sweep wing aircraft, instead of having two independent symmetrical wings. A swept wing aircraft has just one wing, rotating around a central axis. This reduces the number of moving parts, overall mass and maintenance costs. Results from NASA tests show that the swept wing not only works, but can also maintain good stability at both low and high speeds. Although flying an aircraft with a swept wing requires a precise control system, modern automatic flight algorithms are fully capable of handling this. Computer simulations show that swept wing aircraft have higher lift drag ratio, better fuel efficiency at high cruise speeds, superior acceleration and altitude stability. This opens up great potential not only for military aircraft, but also for commercial air transport, especially for future transcontinental or high-speed routes. Why hasn't the wing taken off yet? Although the idea of a wing design offers many advantages in theory, in testing to date, we have yet to see such an aircraft produced and operated on a commercial or military scale. The question is, why has a design that is highly regarded in theory and testing not yet flown in the real world? The answer lies in a complex combination of technological, economic, engineering, and even psychological factors.